Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to study about the trigeminal neuralgia. So what is trigeminal neuralgia? Trigeminal is a name of a nerve. It's called trigeminal because it is having three divisions. The divisions are ophthalmic, maxillary, mandibular. And neuralgia means pain. So it is a pain which is occurring in any of the three division of the trigeminal nerve. It could be in the ophthalmic division or the maxillary division or the mandibular division. However, the mandibular division is more commonly affected. Okay. So before we dive deep into the trigeminal neuralgia, let us first study a little more about the trigeminal nerve. So this will help us revise our concepts and we can get familiar with the trigeminal neuralgia little better. So the trigeminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve and as already said, it is called trigeminal because it consists of three divisions. Ophthalmic nerve, which is the nerve of orbit. The maxillary nerve, which is the nerve of the pterygopalatine fossa. And the mandibular nerve, which is the nerve of the infratemporal fossa. So all the three nerves, they arise from a trigeminal ganglion. So trigeminal ganglion is a semilunar ganglion, which lies in the trigeminal fossa. So where is this trigeminal fossa? So this trigeminal fossa is on the anterior surface of the petrous temporal bone. Now where the hell is this petrous temporal bone? When I was in first year, I had a hard time understanding all these, you know, trigeminal fossa, petrous temporal bone and blah blah. So we'll see where the petrous temporal bone is. So let us come to the temporal bone petrous temporal bone will be something associated with the temporal bone so now let us look inside the temporal bone so when you look inside you find a pyramid sort of thing here you can see this is the petrous temporal bone okay so the trigeminal fossa lies on the anterior surface of the petrous temporal bone and in this trigeminal fossa, we have the trigeminal ganglion. And from the trigeminal ganglion, the three nerve arises. Okay, so this is our brain with the trigeminal nerve. So we have the left trigeminal nerve and the right trigeminal nerve. So as you can see, the trigeminal nerve is attached to the ventral aspect of this thing, which is the pons. So if I zoom in. You can see that it is attached to the ventral aspect of the pons. So this is the sensory root. And we also have a small motor root. So the motor root lies medially to the sensory root. Okay. So these two roots, they invaginate the dura of the posterior cranial fossa. And the sensory root will join the trigeminal ganglion. Okay. The motor root will lie deep to the ganglion and will not join it. Instead, it will pass out to join the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. So, the motor will join the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve while the sensory will join the trigeminal ganglion. So, this is our temporal bone and this is the inside surface of temporal bone. And here we can see the petrous temporal bone and here we have the trigeminal fossa in which the trigeminal ganglion is present. So the trigeminal ganglion is semilunar in shape. Alright. And it is covered by double fold of dura matter. So it's covered by double fold of dura matter. And it forms the trigeminal cave or we call it the McHill's cave. McHill's cave. So this very ganglion, it is attached to the pons, which we had seen, by a thick sensory root. So it is attached to the pons by a thick sensory root. And small motor root arises from the pons just medial to the sensory root. And it passes deep to the ganglion. So it is passing deep to the ganglion. It is not going in the ganglion it is passing deep into the ganglion and it will enter the foramen ovale okay 
and join the mandibular nerve just below the base of skull all right so the motor one goes to the mandibular nerve that is why mandibular nerve has both sensory and motor root while the ophthalmic and the maxillary division they just have the sensory root okay now let's come back to this model here so we are seeing norma frontalis now here we'll see from where the nerves come out so the ophthalmic division enters the orbit through superior orbital fissure so this is the superior orbital fissure so it will enter the orbit through the superior orbital fissure and it will divide into three branches three branches let's say these are the three branches so these would be the lacrimal the frontal and the nasociliary now the maxillary nerve it leaves the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum which we can see near to the petrous temporal bone so there is a rotundum so there is a foramen rotundum there so the nerve will leave the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum so the maxillary nerve it leaves the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum and it enters the orbit through inferior orbital fissure so this is our inferior orbital fissure so it will enter through the inferior orbital fissure and then it will appear on the face through this foramen this is the infrabital foramen and on the face it will give three branches these are the palpebral branches the nasal branches and the superior labial branches okay so the mandibular nerve passes through the foramen ovale and it will form the main trunk in the infratemporal fossa so here we have the infratemporal fossa which is infratemporal means below the temporal bone so we have a fossa there so it will form the main trunk in the infratemporal fossa and then it will move on for a short course and divide into a large posterior and a small anterior branch okay so this was a brief idea about the anatomy of the trigeminal nerve now let us move on now let us see which areas are supplied by each of these nerves so this is a diagram which depicts the distribution of the ophthalmic nerve ophthalmic nerve so we can see that it supplies the cornea upper conjunctiva mucosa of the anterior superior nasal cavity frontal anethmoidal sinuses skin and dorsum of external nose superior eyelid forehead and the scalp and this is the diagrammatic representation for the maxillary division maxillary division so it supplies the dura mater of the anterior part of the middle cranial fossa conjunctiva of the inferior eyelid mucosa of the posterior inferior nasal cavity the maxillary sinus the palate and anterior part of superior oral vestibule the maxillary teeth will also be involved and skin of lateral external nose you can see here inferior eyelid anterior cheek and the upper lip and this is for the mandibular mandibular division so here we can see that it supplies sensory innervation to the mucosa of the anterior two third of the tongue so this area is involved the anterior two third of the tongue then we have the floor of the mouth the posterior and anterior inferior oral vestibule mandibular teeth skin of lower lip buccal parotid temporal regions of face external ear and it also supplies motor innervation as already told the mandibular has both sensory and motor division so we studied about the sensory now the motor one is that they supply motor innervation to the muscles of mastication muscles of mastication mastication and also mylohyoid 
anterior belly of digastric, tensor tympani, and tensor villi palatini. So these are the motor supply.